Welcome back, my fellow mobile gamers, and look at this Mario Kart Tour mobile finally released. And so, of course, we're going to check it out today. I'm going to talk about what I like and what I dislike about it. And apart from the fact that it's played in portrait mode, which admittedly is a bit weird, it's pretty much the good old Mario Kart, but just on mobile. It even has the Mario Kart levels that we know from previous Mario Kart titles and pretty much everything about the game just oozes of high quality from the audio with lots of high quality sound effects to the 3D models and just everything in between. I would actually argue that this is the highest quality Nintendo game on mobile, not just the highest quality kart racer, but we'll get back to that, but also the highest quality Nintendo game overall. Just look at it. It looks stunning. And best of all, the game is actually fun to play. Now we are using the simplified control system here just because simply, frankly, I'm, <laughs> I'm not that good at these controls yet. It's not that the controls don't work well. It's just that uh, with drifting, it actually takes a bit of time to get used to. And I wanted to make sure that uh, we would at least have a chance at winning maybe the first spot or the second spot uh, in some of the games that we play here today for this video. Now we are in the second position right now and what are we gonna get? We're gonna get speed boosts. That's awesome and we can take out the opponent there with a red shell. There we go. We're in the first position right now. You guys can see the map in the top left corner of the screen so you can follow along and see how far we're gonna get. Oh, let's drop a banana there. I guess that didn't... Oh, it did actually hit Donkey Kong. <laughs> oh man, okay, we got hit there by a lightning bolt. What did we get there? Some gold and another banana. But look in the top left corner of the screen though, guys, at the map. It really looks like we're very far ahead of the opponent. And here we go. We won this round. Now that is awesome. So let's see what happened here. We got the first position. We got some points for both our racer and our glider. That's pretty cool. And let's see how many stars we got. We got one, two, three... Four stars. Okay, so there's still one more star that we can uh, go back and get later on. But for now, we can still continue to the next level, though. As you guys can see in the toad circuit up here in the top left corner, we only have 5,300 points, which only gave us three stars. But uh, we're still able to continue to the next one. Now, we do need eight more stars to unlock uh, this gift here. So that's the next thing that's going to unlock. And I think we'll have a pretty good chance of getting eight stars in these two last levels. But if not... We'll just have to go back and maybe play the uh, the Toad Circuit, or maybe there are some levels over here. Yeah, look at this one, for example, in the top right corner that only gave us three stars as well. Now, when it comes to kart races on mobile, I've played pretty much all of them, at least the most significant ones, like, for example, Beach Bucky Racing, or even the Tiki Kart 3D that I played quite a long time ago. And one of my biggest complaints with those, and all the other kart races, by the way, is the lack of real-time multiplayer. And don't be fooled, by the way, the matches in Mario Kart Tour aren't actually multiplayer either. At least, not yet they're not, but the game does tell us, though, that there is a real-time multiplayer game mode coming, and I simply can't wait for it. It was the feature that I was most excited about when I heard that Nintendo was even working on a Mario Kart Tour mobile game, and then later on it was revealed that there was going to be no multiplayer, or at least it was reported by a German news site that there was going to be no multiplayer. And then, now, luckily, it turns out that there will, in fact, be multiplayer, but just not at launch. Now, I'm not too happy about the fact that this game actually tries to trick us into thinking that what we're playing right now is multiplayer, because it certainly does. I mean, all the other racers in the level right now, they have real names, they, they look like actual players, but in fact, they're just AI bots, and that's kind of a scummy move by Nintendo. I mean, why would they want to trick us into thinking that this is real-time multiplayer? Just tell us that it's not, and, and don't go around using other players real names, but I guess they do that because they know that people will get hooked and by the time they realize it's not real-time multiplayer, they will probably have fallen in love with the game already. But here's the thing though, if you're just as excited as I am for the real-time multiplayer, now is definitely the time to get into this game, familiarize yourself with the controls, become good at the game, and then once multiplayer actually releases, you will be ready and uh, you'll be able to defeat all your friends because you will already have played the single player version of the game. And there are plenty of single player content, by the way, so I don't foresee that, that you or me or anyone else will run out of content for at least the next many, many tens of hours, if not even hundreds of hours, but I don't know that yet. I've played this game for just about a good three or four hours at this point, probably, um, and I'm still liking it, even though it only has a single player move. Now, as you guys can see, whenever we win one of these matches, there's a chance that uh, one of our either racers, one of our carts, one of our gliders 
gain enough experience points to actually level up. And when that happens, the amount of points that we earn when using either the racer, the cart, or the glider will increase. And that's a pretty neat system because it means that if we're stuck in a certain level, we just need to grind a bit, not a whole lot, but just a bit, because eventually we'll start getting all five stars in each of these levels as we've leveled up our cart racers and, and drivers enough so that we earn much more points. So that, for example, would have been very useful going into this level, as you guys can see. We were very close to getting that fourth star we only need 165 or 55 extra points. So actually now that the races have been upgraded and the gliders got upgraded, maybe if we just replay this level, we will probably get the fourth star. But look at this, do a rocket start. We did that, so now we completed all of the daily challenges. So those are just daily quests. And actually on that topic, let's talk a bit about the other gameplay mechanics in this game, because apart from the single player game mode and the upcoming multiplayer game mode, the way we unlock new drivers, carts and gliders is through a randomized gacha unlocking system, which requires premium currency. And luckily we got some of that premium currency for free. So let's just go in here and see what we'll be able to get. Uh, there are three items on spotlight right now, but I'm just gonna purchase 10 launches from the pipes. Of course it's the pipe, because it's Mario, you know? So let's see what did we get here. Hopefully something really rare. So we got Baby Peach, oh that's so cute. We got uh, Kuba Truba, so that leveled halfway up to level two now. Once we get more of the same one, it levels up. And yep, there we go, it leveled up to level two, so now it gave us a plus two percent chance of starting a frenzy, that's pretty cool. So let's see what we're gonna get here. Hopefully no more duplicates. Oh, we got the Peach Parasol, I think that was one of the Really rare ones, wasn't it? I feel like we really got lucky there. And so we got another glider. We got Donkey Kong. So now he leveled up to level two. So we've got him already. I'm not really looking to level up our units, though. I'm just looking to get something new. So we got Pipe Frame. Uh, but we already had that one as well. We got another Baby Peach. I mean, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> Give us something new. Oh, there we go. Tuopo Yoshi. That is a, uh, that's a new one. So let's have a look at it here. Well, this actually wasn't too bad. I mean, we got... Uh, three duplicates of, of Yoshi and we got two baby peach, but apart from that uh, all of our units were Well, not all of them were new, but at least we didn't get multiple duplicates in the same pool So we got some challenge points here, which are gonna give us some oh some premium currency That's pretty cool. Some of these challenges by the way provide us with premium currency Some of them provide us with stars So that's another way to go back in a previous level and try to grind so that you get one of these challenges completed And then you get a star and then if you're stuck, I mean you can then continue uh, to the next level. Land 10 hits with bananas. So for example, that challenge you can do in pretty much any level, even in the first level in the game, uh, if you really feel stuck. But to be honest though, the many first levels are pretty simple. But that is how you unlock new cards, uh, new racers in this game. Let's just spend the last of our premium currency here. I'm a bit afraid of how this will impact the fairness of the real-time PvP mode. But I guess we'll have to see once it releases, because I mean, if you if you unlock enough of these uh, gliders, enough of the racers and so on, you'll pretty much be able to earn a lot more points than your opponents, unless, of course, the way it works in real-time multiplayer is that it doesn't matter how many points we get, and instead it's just all about finishing first. Oh, we got Diddy Kong! That is so cool. So actually, with our one normal pulls instead of the, the 10 time pull, we were actually more fortunate because we didn't get duplicates. Now, there is one more way that Mario Kart Tour monetizes, and that is through a Battle Pass-like subscription system called the Gold Pass. And as many news outlets already talked about, it costs five US dollars, which is coincidentally the same as the Apple Arcade or the Google Play Pass. So this is quite a bit of money to spend every month on just a single mobile game. But with this Gold Pass, we get more gold, we get more rewards when we level up, and we get access to the 200cc game mode, which is the most difficult and the fastest game modes. Right now, we can only play 50, 100, and 150cc, but with the gold pass, we can play 200cc as well. So essentially, if we really want to get the most difficult and the most hardcore experience, we need that subscription. Now, we do, of course, get some premium currency for free in this game, but it's really not a lot, especially not in comparison to most other games that have a similar gacha system. And so we have to just save up for a very long time or spend real life money on the game, but even spending real life money gets insanely expensive. First of all, the in-app purchases go nearly all the way up to 100 US dollars, and also even spending two US dollars won't give us enough of the premium currency to actually be able to do a single pull. Yes, you heard that right. Uh, two US dollars still only gives us three diamonds, and we need five diamonds to do a one pull to get either a new glider, uh, a new racer, or a new card.
That is kinda insane. Even if I really enjoy the game, I'll probably never end up spending that much on a mobile game just to get one new glider or just to get one new racer, for example. But maybe that's just me. I really don't mind the additional rewards for subscribing. I feel like that's okay. I mean, the game has got to make money somehow, but locking that 200cc game mode behind a subscription just seems like a bit too much. However, though, as long as the multiplayer will still be free, I will be very happy because I'm not really that interested in the single player game modes at the end of the day. I'm just here for the multiplayer. At the end of the day, Mario Kart Tour is a really high quality game and I've actually been having lots of fun playing it even though I'm mostly here for the multiplayer. So with that said, let me know what you think about the game in the comment section down below. And now let's get to the mobile gaming news of the day, which is that PUBG Mobile has now earned over a billion US dollars in revenue. And yes, that was just the mobile version of PUBG, not the mobile and PC version combined. And most of this revenue now comes from China, where the game wasn't allowed to be monetized until earlier this year. And it seems that Chinese players just can't get enough of spending money on this game. So despite the game not being brand new anymore, it's still generating much more revenue than ever before. And it's sitting at 400 million downloads at the moment. Interestingly, actually, Battle Royale competitor Knives Out by NetEase has already earned $820 million in mobile as well. So it's actually not too far behind PUBG Mobile. And then Fortnite is sitting at 750 million US dollars. But that is without that game being available in China yet though. And as we saw with PUBG Mobile, we really know how strong and how powerful the Chinese market is. So if Fortnite released in China, I'm pretty sure that they would outdo or at least get on level with PUBG Mobile in terms of uh, overall revenue. So with that little nugget of information now in your brain, let's end off here for today. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.